Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Showman. Before we jump in, let me say thank you. We are past 2,500 subscribers, and we're steadily climbing up. I'd love to get to 2,600 by the end of the week, so please help us get there. I know it's only Monday, so we can get there. I know we can get it done. I appreciate all of you. Let's just ju- jump right in on the topic of this moment, because it's not just today, it's this moment, because I'll have a lot more topics today. I have a background in journalism. I have a degree in journalism. So nothing makes me happier than seeing the power of the pen. Or in today's, the power of the keyboard. I did a video the other day about Deion Sanders and his narcissistic rant dealing with CBS reporter um, Eric Christensen, and then later on dealing with Sean Keeler from the Denver Post. Now, Eric Christensen did absolutely nothing to Deion Sanders to deserve the type of commentary he got about how he doesn't deal with CBS, despite the fact that CBS has, hell, pays him, <laughs> or at least last year paid him. He, he His show was on CBS. He's done a number of things on CBS. He's been on 60 Minutes in the past year on CBS. But apparently, they, Deion Sanders doesn't like the fact that his son had an article. Maybe it's the article on his son who uh, filed bankruptcy because he didn't want to pay a judgment against on a security guard. He assaulted and battered and injured badly when he was in high school. Um, you know, it sucks when things happen and you act like they didn't happen. But that actually happened, Dion. So the things that happen in your life, guess what? There are receipts on those things, and writers will write about it. So sorry if that bothers you. But, or maybe it was the fact that they re- re- you know, regarded, CBS regarded Colorado as, I'm sorry, Dion as the second worst coach in the conference. And I think it was 61st overall at 68 uh, power conference coaches. Heck. If I was the one making the list, he'd be number 68, and he'd be the worst in his conference because I find nothing endearing about him as a coach. I don't find him to be a good coach. And I find, I mean, I think he's a phenomenal marketer. I've always said it. he's a phenomenal marketer. He knows how to pull, he knows how to hit buttons, trigger people, get people interested, all that stuff. He's really, really great at that. Coaching, actual physically coaching people, absolutely terrible. He has no idea how to handle how to handle people in the terms of coaching, because he's good at deflecting blame off of himself onto other people, including his players, including his other coaches. It's never his fault. But Sean Keeler from the Denver Post, he went in, bro. He went in on this guy. He tried to embarrass him. He tried to I don't know if you want to say emasculate him, but he tried to make this guy look really bad. Right. And and I just thought it was a really, really bad look. Um, Try to make it real personal in nature. Why are you making it? What what does his personal life have to do with what he writes about your program? Like I said the other day, if they were 11 and one, I'm sure Sean Keeler would have written plenty of amazing things about your program and some wonderful things about your son. If he hadn't, I don't know, beat some security guard up, you know. So, we see Deion Sanders once again. I mean, if you watched all the, if you watched the, the press conference, he started going into stuff about chemistry and, and, and comparing words on bolstered to improved. And, you know, he got chippy as hell. And he actually went out to a point where he said that, well, you don't like him and he doesn't like you and y'all work together. That's great, Deion. In most situations involving sports, Chemistry does matter. People getting along does matter a little bit. And certainly knowing what your teammate to the right or to the left is doing matters. That is chemistry, Dion. I know you want to be a fucking asshole all the goddamn time, but chemistry in sports matters. Knowing that your player in a basketball game in the corner is going to back cut to the rim because you know him that well. It matters. Knowing you have help side defense because you've played with that guy and you know what he's going to do because he's done it a thousand times, it matters. But no, he wants to sit here and be, be, be chippy about it when it comes down to chemistry and bolstered versus improved. All that other nonsense. But Dion took his shots at Sean Keeler. But Sean Keeler took his shots back. 
And as a person got a degree in journalism, Sean Keeler exhibited the power of the pen. And I love it. This is just a little bit from Sean Keeler's column today. Was this today or yesterday? This was posted, actually, this was posted on Saturday. Specific, and I'm going to link it uh, in, the, in the description. But he says here, This was Desperate Dion, a man who stared into the future and saw five and seven staring back. This was Nebraska Dion, as in Dion from the Nebraska postgame news conference in Lincoln. After the buffs, the buffs dropped another heartbreaker. This was a side of Sanders the front range hadn't seen before. A confident man who suddenly looked and acted and sounded afraid. Afraid of critics, afraid of the truth, afraid of the bad news looming like a tsunami at its crest. It was as if Dion had been visited by the ghost of Christmas future, as if November Dion had stepped out of the time machine in the hallway and grabbed August Dion just before he walked into the touchdown club, handing the latter a game book from Oklahoma State. Folks who have dealt with the Sanders team in the past have pointed out that Coach Prime, like all powerful men, pays people to make inconvenient things go away. Well, he can't make a forgiving, occasionally fawning, and comparatively docile press corps go away. He can't make on-record and anonymous comments by his former players and former staffers, real or imagined, go away. He can't make the paper trail from his or his family's past legal scraps, including allegations against Shiloh, go away. So he snaps. He can't hide the fact that CU, which hired him with the sheer and utter desperation of a lonely nerd on prom night, conducted a lousy vetting process, hoping that a lifetime celebrity wouldn't come with a lifetime of skeletons in his closet too. Half the Power 5 schools and most of the NFL wouldn't put up with the prime circus. The cameras, the contracts, the rules, the buffs, they had no choice. Dion is king of CU, El Cabillo de Boco, the emperor of engineering drive. Are you with me or against me? Only once the train station train leaves the station, it doesn't come with brakes. You ride that puppy out full speed until things go off the rails. Let me tell you something, man. That's beautiful. Uh, Sean Keeler, that's beautiful. I, I tell you, it, it, it's the truth. It is the truth, and it is the truth that people don't like. It's the truth that people who love Deion Sanders because he's Deion Sanders for no other reason than being Deion Sanders. It's that truth that escapes so many. It's the truth. It's, it's it's the truth that a lot, it's the truth that, sh that of a of a man who cut sixty five players the second he walked into a, walked on campus last year. It's the it's the truth of a guy who just saw another half of his another half of his roster leave at the end of last season. For whatever reason they left, they left. They left. Whether he pushed them out or they left on them, they realized they didn't want to deal with that type of bull crap, they left. And you have a program that is highly toxic, highly unstable, led by someone who's simply ignorant to his job. He doesn't know what he doesn't know. He doesn't know what to do. So he does what he does. He treats college football like it's high school football. He treated Jackson State like it was high school football. He treats Colorado like it's Jackson State and high school football. These are the things that he does. This is what he does. And he's done it historically. He is a deflector of responsibility. Let me repeat, a deflector of responsibility. It's always someone else's fault. It's always someone else. You talked a lot of shit when y'all beat TCU last year, a TCU that wasn't very good. You used what they did the year before, and you said, oh, this is an amazing team. No, they weren't amazing. They were not very good. And then you beat a Colorado State team that wasn't very good. And you beat a Nebraska team at the time that wasn't very good. And then you got exposed again and again and again and again to the point of going one and eight after you started off three and oh. And you did a lot of talking, telling us all how stupid we were, telling the media, do you believe now? No, I didn't believe then. I didn't believe then, and they didn't believe then. Maybe the clowns at ESPN believed because they knew it would draw ratings, as I said, master marketer. 
Anyone with sense knew that it wasn't real. Anyone with sense knows that this is another four and eight to six and six program this season. Everyone knows this. Except for Dion. Because Dion's never going to recruit the right way. He's never going to recruit high school players to come to Colorado. He's going to focus on immediate, hopeful, hopefully immediate fixes that change his program overnight. Except that's not how it works. You don't change a program by bringing in 50, 60 mercenaries and expect the program to change overnight and start winning. It doesn't work that way. There's no coach that's getting national championships off of teams that are led by by by, by transfers. The Miami Hurricanes just got ranked number 19, and I'm going to tell you, right, I'm a Hurricanes fan, and I'm going to tell you right now, I don't see how the hell the Canes are ranked number 19. Other than the fact that they got Cam Ward and Damian Martinez off the transfer portal, show me on the field. I don't care about that nonsensical ranking. Show me on the field what you're going to do. Because if you give me the last two years of what I watched with Mario Cristobal in Miami, it was straight up garbage. And reality speaking, he probably should have been canned after that Georgia Tech loss. But this guy, Keeler, is right. Dion owns Colorado. He owns Boulder, Colorado. And they are kissing his ass until the wheels fall off. Or until he quits. Whichever comes first. Because if they're 6-6 six and six or worse, my guess is he won't be there next year. But thank you, Sean Keeler, for putting it out there because the power of the pen still exists. I wonder what Dion's going to do now. Is Dion going to try to remove this man's credentials because he doesn't like what he has to say? Is that what he will do? I experienced that myself at a college program because I didn't kiss ass to the coach at the time. I wasn't going to kiss the coach's ass because I'm not sitting. That's not my. That's not my duty. When you're comp- when you're a floundering ass program. I'm going to say what the truth is. And if you don't like it, that's your problem. And whether you keep me from going to games or not, I can still write about it. I don't need to be in a press conference to write about what's going on. It's not that hard. This guy, Sean Keeler, is not some just measly flippin' reporter. He's a columnist there at the Denver Post. That means you're kind of up here. You're not like down the bottom. You're up here. But I've experienced that. I experienced losing my credentials for a season of, of, of UM, Miami Hurricanes basketball when I was, this was years and years ago, because the coach at the time didn't like what I had to say. It's not the current coach, so don't worry about that. He was offended. Be offended. What you're putting out on the field is offensive to people. What you put on the court is offensive to people. If you think that that's, and, and you think people are dumb, that they're just going to accept this absolute trash of a product i knew what colorado was last year i didn't need anyone to tell me but a lot of people at espn didn't believe that it's the same, it's the same people that think that lebron james is, is going to win the nba championship every year it's the same people that think the lakers are going to be a two seed next year those same people I'm, a, I'm not from that 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 world so i actually know the truth and i actually can pay attention long enough to know that it didn't you know that's not the case here But Sean Keeler put it out there, and Sean Keeler has that power of the pen, and Sean Keeler has the ability to make Dion's life very, very unpleasant for the next four months. And I hope he does. Let me know your thoughts. I'm going to link that that, that story into our description. Check it out. But hey, man, you chose to be a head coach in college football. You get asked questions, period. Your job is to answer them. If you don't want to answer them, guess what? You can leave and not coach because there are plenty of coaches that would happily answer questions that Dion refuses to if you don't kiss his ass. But it is what it is, man. Let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, comment, hit that bell. Come on now.